Welcome back. And now we move to Kogi State this morning. Uh, we are going to be having a conversation on the back and forth between the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19 and the Kogi State Government. In an earlier interview, if you um, had followed the breakfast a few weeks ago, about more than a month ago, uh, speaking with the Kogi State Commissioner for Information, he had stated that uh, figures from the PTF were mostly false. Um, and uh, if I'm quoting him correctly, he also said that it's very likely the uh, former chief of staff to the president, Abakari, did not die of you know, COVID-19. He probably had other health complications. Um, lately, there has been issues between the presidential tax force and Kogi State government, um, which continues to claim that the figures are false and Kogi State does not have the COVID-19 um, figures that the PTF keeps releasing. We're speaking this morning with Dr. Sahid Babajide, former chairman, Medical Guild of uh, Lagos um, uh, cha chapter. Medical Guild, I beg your pardon, the Lagos State chapter. Good morning to you, sir. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, viewers. Good morning, presenter. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. We can see you on the road this morning. Uh, I, I'm going to start with asking about the possibility in any way that Kogi State may not have COVID-19 cases. That one cannot be proof. You know, we are in the scientific world. Anything that can be proved, you have to be physical and they have to be studied on it. Unfortunately, you cannot do a study when you don't have a data. If there are no data, there are no study. If there are no study, you can't make a policy. You can't make a statement. Kogi did not allow testing. Therefore, how will you, how will you know if they have COVID or not? And it's very dangerous. Even at this level we are, in the world, somebody is not having data. How you know? You have to prove people wrong that there is no COVID by doing, by testing and have data. And they said, Kogi, since the time we have started from this period to this period, that no everybody is negative. Do you understand? That is a data. But when you don't have data, you are working like a blind man, and a blind man doesn't know where he's going. And when you don't know where you do, you are going, you can get into a pitch. At the end of the day, it's disadvantage. Okay, so how would you uh, how would you assess basically uh, the stance of Kogi State right now, saying coronavirus is not real? Since at this point we do need all hands to be on deck to sensitize the people on the dangers of the virus and the need to stay safe. What I read was that the Commissioner for Information said they didn't say there no there is there is no COVID that the, they had the isolation center and they are the ones that fall, 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 uh, talk about uh, uh, wearing your face mask. That was, I'm confused. Are they saying they believe in COVID or they don't believe in COVID? That, that, that is a from the from the farm with the commissioner for, for... If you don't believe, let know. If you believe, let know. You cannot be saying two things at a that, at that different time. And they said that if Kogi is not testing, how will you believe that say that they are COVID. Therefore, that's a problem. They don't understand what they are talking about. If the government comes out that yeah, what they are talking about, they should not make a, a money venture. You should come out with a data that the tests you people have done, you see that there are no coffee in Kogi State. If you don't do tests, you are giving face masks, you are saying you have isolation. What is the essence of it? You are deceiving yourself. You you are giving face masks. Where do you get the money to buy the face mask? You are doing, so where do you get the money to, to build the isolation center? You, you are the one even making a, a, a money venture. You are not doing tests. Who do, who do you want to put in the isolation center? A people that are negative or people that you don't know their, their status. The people you are giving face masks, on what basis are you giving face masks? Those are the things you should ask them. It's dangerous. And again, the spread, they also increase the spread. Because you don't know if they are positive or God. Even if the government is positive, don't know. Don't know. Therefore, what you do, what you do, what is dangerous in the sense that nobody will go to a place that not be tested. That if this is because everybody believes in science, if there is a, if there is, if, if, if they are tested, if there is increment, we look for the, the make a curve, a, a, a graph, it, it increase, get flattened and come down. When they are not doing tests, where we know, where we be able to know, is there any increment? Is there any decrease? Is there any, any, is a scientific proof? If there is no scientific proof, that the same thing, and it's dangerous. People that go to Kogi now, if you go to Kogi, you are not being tested. You come to Lagos or if they are about Abuja, and you are, you, you are being infected. It's dangerous. All the neighboring states, they are, they, they are being threatened. From neighboring states to other states, they are being threatened. And you should know that Kogi is very close to Abuja. People will pass through Kogi, 
before getting to Abuja, before going out, outside the country. That was very dangerous. Mm. Doctor, so Doctor Babajide, part, part, part of the thing that, yeah. See, this part issue the about that we are from from the medical association point of view is okay. that uh, the NMA have said it at the national level, at the state level that COVID in the time of this pandemic, COVID government is dangerous to to to, to, to Nigeria. They didn't listen. Hmm. I don't know if there's a federation or if there's a power on it that can compare. We have in a federation. I know we have in a federation, but there's some power that is given to the presidency in terms of the emergency like this. That is to that power should come up and make sure that Kogi follow the rule because it's it's endanger the life the life of the Nigerians. And there's a law that I compare them. You have to you're endangering. We are not talking about you. You are endangering the the, 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 the the Nigerians. If that law is being brought in terms of emergency, that Kogi is in the emergency state in terms mm -hmm. of the COVID, I think they will they, 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 they sit that and do the proper thing. All right, Dr. Babajide, taking a look at this, this issue of denying the existence of COVID, it's not just the Kogi state government in Nigeria. If you recall, Donald Trump, former president of the U.S., you know, denied coronavirus. We saw that the president of Mexico also asked people to go out and eat out. Even president of Brazil, president of Tanzania. So many world leaders have actually denied the existence of COVID. And you, we know that some people worldwide believe so. I mean, in the U.S. and some other countries, we saw people protesting against lockdowns. They, they're coming out to say they want to go out, they want to live their lives and all of that. Why do you think, I don't know, from the medical point of view, is there any rational reason why some people would believe that a virus that has killed millions, infected millions of people, killed so many people, is a hoax? Now, it, 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 it's only the why two people are doing the one political reason and economic reason. And the people who mentioned, Brazilian president, former, former president of America, Toronto, they have been infected, they were positive. That's a sign. Despite their denial, they became positive. And they cannot say anything again. Even the, 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 the Trump attitude towards the COVID, making to lose the election number one, also make the present government to be, to be trying to, 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 to fight it back. It's the same thing in Brazil. Brazil have a very high level of, 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 of COVID in the, in the, in the, in the South America. Why America, USA, has the highest COVID, COVID case in the, in the North, even all, all over the world? Those are, those are the doctors that we can give. And why Trump mm -hmm. was because of the political reason? Because he wants to be re-elected. He felt that uh, he will affect the economy. If he affect the economy, his rating will be low. That's just the reason. He know about the science. He know about the 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 the, the, the edge of the of the people. And if we have those data, you know about saying that they say we can we can confirm. And the same, these people are though they, they 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 tested them, and they brought out from one way or that he put face man when when was positive. Those what we are talking about. You should not be denying. You are deceiving ourselves. If you are denying yourself, don't deny the people you are leading. All right. Um, it's dangerous. Doctor Babajide, uh, is it would it be fair to say or agree that, um, and this is from Kingsley Fanwo now, the Commissioner for Information in Kogi State, will it make more sense if he says? Um, I'm not denying the existence of COVID, but the figures that have been put out by the PTF have been exaggerated. It is not as bad as it has been painted. Uh, we don't have this many people um, positive across the country, and it's not, you know, a crisis the way it has been painted. Would it be, you know, would it make more sense if that's, you know, what his um, views are? You see, you see, if you want to make sense, you have to have data, you have to have study, you have to have facts what the figure they have. If they have contrary figure, let them bring it out. That's number one. Before you talk about it, what is your own figure? If you have a contrary figure, this is the figure, this is a fact, this is where you got your figure. That's number one. Number two, you also to also have your own figure from the state. If the, for example, you have a figure on your state, this is the figure my state and compare it to neighboring state and compare the state that have Kogi, Kogi, like the Kogi like them, you now bring it out that this is my figure. They're not putting it to trial. I know who is lying, either the PTF or the Kogi. It's all about mouth saying. We are moving away from the mouth saying. We are not in the in the, in the old days of about 20,000 years ago. We are in a fat period. In the sense that how many people were tested? 
in Kogi comparing to what the PTA was saying. If example, if Kogi have tested for 10 and it can be reported 20, big are the fact. You know about what you say. Oh, oh, Do you understand? And again, the, the, the commissioner was saying they believe in me. If you believe in something, you are not testing. You are you are you are you are building a solution center. You are giving face masks. Does it make sense? Does it make any sense? You say what? Would, why, would, are you, um, why, are you, why are you giving people face masks? Why, why are you building a solution center? For what? For 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 the job the job blue You are not going to put anybody there. You want to put somebody there? How do you put somebody there? You don't either the person positive. Let's let let's talk the right thing to 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 these people now. All right, We're and and, and what 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 reaction? Um, because now there's been back and forth, you know, from the PTF um, and Kogi State um, arguing about figures, arguing about facts. Um, what reaction would you expect from the presidential task force on COVID nineteen uh, as of today, in order to protect the people in Kogi State? Um, that's one, and then also, um, I, I, I'm I'm guessing one of the reasons. Uh, there's still a lot of people who doubt the existence of COVID is because we don't get to, or they don't get to see people falling uh, sick and dying, you know, a lot. Um, so has that also been a challenge um, in Kogi State or has that, you know, been one of the reasons that would, um, uh, you know, push for, you know, the narrative that Kingsley Fanwo is pushing or support the narrative that he's pushing? Yeah, no, 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 number, number one, as I said it. PTF should report the government of Kogi State to, to the Mr. President, who is the commander in chief, which they look at the law. If there's any law that they can they can declare budgets in terms of the health care, health, health, uh, in terms of the health, health, health care issue, the government the, the president should do it. They should look at the law. If there's law, I'm not a lawyer. If there is a law like that, they should do it. They cannot endanger the, the, the Nigeria. That's for, for that one. PTF should report the, the, the president to the uh, PTF should report to the president about the about the, the government. Yeah, the, the, the other one, I blame the federal government. I blame the government for people to be, people will deny it now. When people will deny it in the, in the sense that, that when when government are doing rallies, political rallies, election during pandemic, when you see some people moving out of the country against the law they, they did, when people are not putting, the government officials are not putting on face masks against the law they, 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 they did, how many of them are putting on face masks? Two, the, where the government is showing people that are dancing, people that are asymptomatic. Look at America, look at anywhere. They show people in ICU. People mm. die on oxygen. Those are the cases we should bring out. Let people understand the meaning of this. Let them enforce the law. Let them also by themselves go and do the right thing. They go for rally, many people in the rally, no face masks. Why are you telling people? You see, governor, some governor are not putting on face masks. What are you telling people? The, look at this one. Look at this one. Or oh, 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 NIC or oh, oh, NIN registration. I don't know which our minister, minister do you have. I'm really disappointed that minister the way I, I respected him at his level of education. People are saying you are creating problem. Is there standing? Yourself? What are you standing? Do people believe that? Let the government sit down and do the right thing. Hmm. So we see Thank now you. that the commissioner in Kogi State has reacted uh, to the PTF statement, which was that you know, Kogi State is a high-risk state because they've refused to acknowledge the existence of COVID. Well, the commissioner has now uh, spoke up, spoken up about this, saying that uh, the PTF statement is reckless and unacceptable. What are your thoughts on this? Yes, it's reckless and unacceptable to them. It is not... It, it's reckless today. It's unacceptable today. But what they are saying is, is, is for Nigeria, for, for medical disease, it, 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 it's the right thing they have said. Yeah. It's the right thing they have said. All right. All right. Um, we, of course, we will continue to follow up on uh, the developments from um, Kogi State and the reactions from the PTF. Uh, what's most important, I believe, okay. is the life of every Nigerian, including those in Kogi State. And it's the responsibility of the government to ensure that those lives are uh, protected and they are kept safe. It would be disappointing, and I feel the government would, uh, should take responsibility if um, there's loss of lives in Kogi State because of their attitude uh, towards the virus and the pandemic.
Um, the uh, uh, co commissioner, you know, had stated that you know some of these things the PTF are doing was uh, to kill, and, and I want you to react to this: is to kill uh, the in investment opportunities that are coming into Kogi State. He stated that uh, Kogi State had been thriving, had been doing very well with um, investment opportunities and investors coming in, and so the PTF was trying to reduce those possibilities and those chances and kill the investment platforms. Um, how would you quickly react to that before we go? Yes, my my own reaction is that the the investment is it about investment? Yes. Is it about the health of people? Is it about the investment or about the health of people? Which is more important? Is not the health that is important than, than investment? Can they think about the, the, the health of people before if it's somebody that is good that they're going to invest? Do you expect somebody to 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 to, to come to to, to 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 that place? Eh? Do you expect somebody to, to come to a state? We are the health issue is being you know, or, 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 or is not being addressed. Nobody will come to that state. It's still for the, for the government of Kogi State to do the right thing. Let them let the people be tested, follow the protocol of the PTF, and let the life be better for Nigeria. Doctor Doctor Day. Day. now. Doctor Babajide, is it also important to know the reaction of the NMA in Kogi State? Um, the medical association there That's that it. should be dealing with these yes. things they're the frontline the workers the cookie the cookie have said this several times that is dangerous he have said this ever the national enemy also said the same thing that the danger for kogi not for not to allow people for what testing they have said it that the, the, the nma national nma state have said it is dangerous from the beginning that should allow people to to to, to undergo testing and they are warned, they are plead to the to the Kogi State government. Till now, they are not doing it. It's not the first time. Hmm. All right. I guess that will be all at this time. Thank you very much, Dr. Saheed Babajide, for your thoughts uh, on the breakfast this morning. Former Chairman, Medical Guild, Lagos Chapter. Uh, the, the, thank you. Thank you, viewer. Thank you, the, the centre. All right. And do drive safe. Uh, I guess you're still on the road this morning. It's important to state once again, for the thousandth time, the responsibility of government at every level uh, to protect lives and property of uh, citizens. Mm -hmm. um, a government that fails to take responsibility either by actions or by acceptance of um, a danger um, is, as, is, is guilty in every way. If there's loss of lives in Kogi State, and it's not because, you know, everybody needs to, you know, shout down Kingsley Fan and say, you know, you don't know what you're saying. Maybe they also have their own facts, but it's important that they, of course, show those facts. It's important that they test yes. and say, okay, we've been tested, we've tested 100,000 people, and we can't see these figures that the PTF is bringing out. That's great. It will be great if we have that. But when a government fails to do all of this... And, and simply just and deny. Exactly. And, and there's loss of life. The government should be held responsible for the loss or the death of anybody in Kogi State. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. we live in a society where government doesn't always understand the times when they should be held accountable, when they fail to take action, because we don't have a government that can be sued for the loss of three lives because of their negligence. We don't live in a society where government can be sued because four people died as a result of government's negligence, unfortunately. And so the Kogi State government if it's you know necessary to bring out its own figures of testing, mm -hmm. we would love to see that. Indeed. Um, but it's also important to know what the PTF can do, what the presidency can do in order to protect lives in Kogi State, because well. I think right now they've left it. They've, they've basically left it to us, saying you've been warned. Kogi State is high risk. Yes. You go there at your own risk. But um, I. But maybe they can do more. I don't know if states can if the presidency can sanction states for taking actions like this i have no idea uh, let's just see how the case unfolds since uh, the back and forth and banter between the government and kogi the ptf and kogi is still going on we'll now take a break to return to discuss world candidates today and the who has released grim statistics about this saying cancer cases double in 20 years do stay with us on the breakfast
Welcome back to The Breakfast, our final conversation this morning. And we are going to be talking about World Cancer Day. Uh, there's grim figures, and maybe you could describe them as frightening um, with regards to uh, cancer here in Nigeria and across the world. We've invited this morning Dr. Abian Zelu, uh, the Executive Secretary, Giving Tide International. Thank you very much for joining us. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. All right. The statistics from the WHO says, you know, about talking about cancer, uh, you know, doubling, basically. And uh, it's saying that there are 43.8 million cancer patients worldwide. And bringing it back home in Nigeria, it says in a country, uh, basically 70% of cancer deaths occur in developing countries. So could you shed more light on this, basically, from your work in this field? <coughs> Yes, um, the, according to WHO, um, the cancer right now um, is one in six people globally. And unfortunately, most of the deaths are occurring in developing countries like Nigeria, mainly because we do not have the infrastructure in developing countries. And um, so for that reason, you have that... Um, for instance, in Nigeria, we have no comprehensive cancer center, where in India, there are over um, 200 comprehensive cancer centers. That is a, a tertiary health institution where you can have, where, every, um, where you have every department focused on cancer, and you can have access to every form of cancer treatment. So right now in Nigeria, every yeah, unfortunately, we have about 200,000 um, cases of cancer, out of which we have 100,000 new cases, over 100,000 new cases every year. And um, every day we lose about 200 people to cancer. And then for each uh, day of uh, that day, we lose about 32 women to breast cancer, 28. Um, uh, women to cervical cancer, 16 men to prostate cancer, 14 people to liver cancer, and then different types of cancer. So um, we have this um, statistic, and it's something that is uh, alarming, it's not acceptable, and it's something we can do something about. That's why the uh, WHO that de designated today Every year, February 4, it is designated as World Cancer Day, so that we can amplify the message, rally the whole world, grant this fight against cancer to ensure that um, we are able to reduce the amount of preventable, lively preventable cancer deaths. Because most of these deaths are preventable if uh, we do the right things. For instance, cervical cancer is virtually 100% preventable because it has, it has a precancerous stage. And then if a woman is picked up in the precancerous stage, the woman can be prevented from having the full-blown cancer. You can also prevent it by, with vaccines, the vaccine against human papilloma virus. And so people do not need to be dying in, at the way they're dying from these diseases. So today so is... Um, designated to amplify the message, to let people know that, see, we can actually um, win uh, the fight against cancer. And um, uh, for that reason, the theme of this year, actually it's a three-year team, it started th uh, th three years ago, is I am and I win. Dr. Nzelu, we'll, we'll delve, and, uh, Dr. Nzelu, yeah? we'll delve uh, deeper yeah? into... Can you hear me? Hello? Can yes, you? I'm hearing you. All right. We'll delve deeper into the campaign of I Am, I Will for, you know, Cancer okay. Awareness 2021. But okay. quickly, before we go, go too deep, I want you to address the myths that some people, most people okay. have about cancer. Because there's a myth, basically, about cancer, you know, and that it's a white man's disease. We know this is not true, but many people still, you know, believe that that's the fact. So would you, would you kindly address that and the amount of awareness that needs to be done into this spelling myths about the existence of cancer and how it affects people of all gender, all ages, and all races. 
Now, um, of course, cancer is a global, it's a pandemic. It affects people all across the world. And I just mentioned the statistics in Nigeria, which shows that it doesn't spare anybody. It doesn't spare children, it doesn't spare um, women, it doesn't spare men. It affects every category of person. Globally, one in every three persons will be diagnosed of cancer in their lifetime. That's WHO statistics. And it's projected that it will get worse. Now, the recent statistics about uh, cancer, you know, about 18 million people are currently have ca um, uh, cancer. And out of that each year, new cases, you have 18 million new cases each year, apart from the over 40 million cases that are already existing. And then out of this, we have about 9.6 million deaths every year. But most of these deaths are occurring in developing countries. So we cannot, in, in Nigeria, for instance, say that it is a white man's disease. Because most of the deaths are actually occurring in developing countries. So cancer affects everybody, and it, including children. Recently, we lost, there, there was a, a young lady that just finished um, secondary school that died recently from leukemia that, uh, that everybody, most people will know about. So that tells you that it doesn't spare people. Even children are born, born with some children are born with cancer. Like for instance, the cancer of the eye, retinoblastoma, can occur from new when the child is in the first month of his life, the child's life he can have the cancer. So all right. cancer affects everyone, mm -hmm. and which is why we have to all rally around. That's why they say every it is everybody's duty to make sure that they do their bit to ensure that we are able to tackle this cancer. Because right. even uh, with this Dr. current Zalo. statistics, WHO is projecting that it's going to get worse. Hello? <laughs> we're here. Um, hold on. Uh, I, I want you to sp uh, quickly speak, uh, because we're working with times. So I want you to quickly speak on um, management of uh, cancer here in Nigeria. There is uh, something called comprehensive cancer centers. Um, I'm not sure how many of them we have, or if we have any at all here in Nigeria. Um, so quickly speak on, you know, the level of effort we're putting into managing cancer patients here in Nigeria, how much lack there, you know, exists um, with regards to our management of cancer cases here in Nigeria. And then also you can, you know, address the issue, the uh, confusion with regards to the causes of cancer. A lot of people still do not understand how it starts or where it comes from. And cancer basically is a disease that is a result from damage to the DNA of the cell. Normally, the cell, when it's um, from childhood, from, from the womb, the cells are that blood, building block of the body. That's like we have blocks that are used to build houses. The body is made up of cells, that building blocks of cells. So these cells, they grow, they, 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 they divide, uh, but they are controlled. You have the DNA controls it so that it doesn't go out of hand. So when there's a problem with that DNA, then the cell starts growing out of hand. That's what it leads to cancer, depending on the parts of the body. Oh. There's no single cause of oh. cancer. Basically, it's the DNA that has problems. What precedes that cause depends on the kind of cancer. For instance, I mentioned cervical cancer, the major cause of cervical cancer, the human papilloma virus. You have a different risk factor for different cancers, for breast cancer, you have uh, many habits, the environmental habits can have a, uh, contribute a lot to uh, cancer and the environment to it. Things like dizzy film, smoking, lack of exercise, all these things can contribute to, uh, to um, your diet and all that. They all contribute to cancer. And the, for us to be able to tackle cancer effectively, you have the preventive aspect, you have the uh, diagnostic aspect, you have the treatment. So you need to be able to assess uh, diagnosis to be able to get uh, picked up early and then to be treated. Unfortunately, in Nigeria, we don't have those structures on grants for, for cancer. We, we don't have, we lack, our health system is very deficient when it comes to cancer. Uh, right now, um, the basic the treatment you use for cancer, radiotherapy, in Nigeria, we have less than 10 in the country. Most of them are not working. And so only a few, and even most of the ones that are working are both mothers and then that's that. So we, we don't have comprehensive cancer center at all. 
A comprehensive health center is a tertiary health institution that every department, let's say if you have an institution like Lagos University Teaching Hospital, all the departments will be focused on cancer. They'll be able to take care of any kind of cancer, every stage of cancer, whether it's prevention, whether it's treatment, whether it's palliative, whether it is eye cancer, any part of the body, it will start with comprehensive way. That's what we have. It, that's what you need to have to be able to effectively treat cancer. But unfortunately, we don't have that, which is why you find most Nigerians who, could, who can afford it traveling abroad for treatment. And unfortunately, because of the fact that the delay in processing the travel or even in the diagnosis in the first place, a lot of people that even travel still end up dying. Oh, so it is a, 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 a pathetic situation, which is why we have more deaths. Even though cancer occurs globally, it is the incidence is increasing across the board, but the deaths are increasing more in developing countries. And like WHO projected that there will be 60 percent increase in cancer deaths by um, 60 percent increase in cancer deaths within the next two decades. But right. the increase will be worse in developing countries, which will be by a, over 80%. Hmm. So we have a big problem hmm. because we don't have the infrastructure abroad. For instance, in the US now, they have over 1,500 comprehensive health centers. Like I said, India has over 200. Even places, some smaller countries than Nigeria, in Tanzania, they have a comprehensive health center and every single cancer patient is treated free or charged. So if you are a cancer patient, you are a citizen of that of Tanzania, you don't need to pay any penny from the diagnosis to the treatment for your cancer. So but we don't have that in Nigeria. And that's why we're saying today we need to know that we need to have this infrastructure on ground. Luckily, with the work of the National Cancer Prevention Program, we, we currently have mobile cancer centers which go to, from community to community to carry out free um, outreaches. But we need to now scale it up by having the comprehensive cancer centers that will be able to optimally treat people so that people will not need to travel. Imagine what happened with the COVID-19, with the lockdown. Yes. With the lockdown, we found that people could no longer travel abroad, even if you could afford it. And you are, if there were some people that were just processing their travel abroad before the lockdown. And they couldn't travel again. So you find people dying because they could not have access to treatment. So that's why it is important for us to have the local infrastructure, to have the comprehensive health center right here in Nigeria. Right. And it is something that is achievable. But we are losing a lot of resources. Over one billion US dollars is spent on treatment abroad, according to CDM estimation. All right, Dr. Nzelu. Let's talk a bit now right, about the... Let's talk about the campaign, the I Am I Will campaign. What is it about and what should it mean to the everyday Nigerian? Yes, the I Am I Will campaign is to let us know that if we, for us to be able to win this war against cancer, every individual has a role to play. So, and it's calling on everybody, it's declaring that each person should commit to doing his bit. So if you do your bit, I do my bit, will end up being able to win this war against cancer. It aligns with um, the commercial of some people like um, Lily Tomlin, who said that, I wonder why somebody doesn't do something about that. Then I realized I was somebody. You know, when things are happening in the country, we tend to look at, ah, look at the government is bad. This person is doing this, this person is doing it. And then we don't come around to look at, what do I do? To make a difference, how do I contribute to a change? How do I also contribute to a positive transformation? And so, this is a carrier call to tell us that everyone has a role to play. You need to, you can, you need to know that you will have your screening. You need to be able to go for your screening, but you need to have the infrastructure for the screening. If there is no infrastructure for the screening, where do you go for your screening? So, and we can contribute towards making it happen. This comprehensive health center that I said is not available in Nigeria and they were going abroad for. And then you see, even those that cannot afford it, you see them they can, uh, going around begging for people to, to contribute so that they will travel. But usually, at the time they're doing that, it's already too late. Do you know that if one in seven Nigerians, we give only 1,000 naira, within a year, in less than a year, a comprehensive cancer center will be ready in this country. The money that was spent to on treatment for cancer in a year 
It's enough to build 20 comprehensive cancer centers every year in Nigeria. Yet we don't have one. So the yeah, campaign is telling us that why you, if you do your bit, if you don't wait for, uh, you don't need to be the uh, big man, you don't need to be a millionaire, you don't, so be able to contribute to this change. So if one in seven Nigeria contribute one, as a naira, we have a comprehensive cancer center. Hmm. If you you, um, tell, if you cannot contribute, you talk you 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 know somebody that you can talk to. You, you okay, they are a child. You can tell, talk to your parents. This is what is happening. Or do you know that there's no compressing cancer in Nigeria? Do you know that over two hundred people are dying every day in Nigeria from cancer? Do you know that we can actually make a difference if we do join us together? Um, Dr. Nzalo, like Dr. Nzalo, if you can, in um, one minute max, uh, speak to us about healthier living um, habits for Nigerians um, that might, of course, uh, help uh, prevent uh, cancer in the future. In one minute, please, we're, we're out of time. Yes, we, 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 uh, we for, for one of the ways to prevent cancer, like I mentioned, the habits affect your, your um, survivor or your risk of cancer. So avoiding smoking, having healthy diets, bed fruits, vegetable, preventing, um, <laughs> reducing your intake of fatty, uh, fatty food, uh, red, processed uh, food, red meat, and small, um, having good sexual habits. People that have unsafe sexual habits are at risk of cerebral cancer, even though cancer is not trans uh, sexually transmitted. Some of the risk factors are like hepatitis B and C. They are risk factor for liver cancer. Eighty percent of liver cancers are due to hepatitis B. All so right. if you don't have, uh, oh. if it, if you you have practice your good sexual habits, uh, HPV is a major cause of about twelve kinds of cancer, including right. um, thank you very the, much. Um, <clears throat> and all that. So having good sexual habits, exercising. All these uh, habits can help you to reduce your intake, your your risk of having cancer, Doctor. and that's another part of I am. Mm -hmm. Because if you do that for yourself, your risk will be greatly reduced. And of course, going for screening and taking your vaccination, your hepatitis B vaccine, which is now given from birth, so right. everybody Doctor. should ensure that they have Abian hepatitis Zalu. B vaccine. Thank you very much Thank for you. speaking with us. Uh, the campaign is called "I Will and I Am." And we hope that we uh, will continue to spread the message. Uh, thanks once again uh, for joining us. Thank you again. Have a great day. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, healthier eating, exercising, um, quitting certain um, habits. habits, like uh, smoking and drinking too much. And, and the safer other ones you mentioned, yes. Sexual yes. Habits. Um, habits also. <laughs> Um, that's you. why it's always better to wait till marriage. Yes, you know, true. like I would always true. say, um, like um, Anessa follow and my footsteps. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks again for keeping it today with us on the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. It's just a few minutes before Osarigi takes the news and uh, gives you the updates around the world. It's goodbye from us uh, for now. 9 a.m. It's uh, of course uh, Plus TV News. But before that, just to remind you, you can join and follow up on any of the conversations that you may have missed out on on social media. It's pretty simple at Plus TV Africa, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Same thing with our YouTube channel. We want to wish you a great Thursday ahead. Is uh, bye for now.